Hello and welcome to Daily News Capsule. Let's start with the important pieces of news that have appeared in the newspaper of today. So the first news that is coming your way is Indian refiners set to start paying in yuan for Russian oil. Now what is the news? What is the importance of this news is that Indian refiners have begun paying, paying for some oil imports from Russia in Chinese currency yuan. Now, the sources uh, with direct knowledge of this matter said that Western sanctions for force Moscow and its customers to find alternatives to the dollar for settling the payment. As you all know that because of the Russia-Ukraine conflict, the Russian government is under heavy sanctions from the Western countries and therefore it is finding it uh, the country, the Russian government is finding uh, it, it to be problematic in settling the transactions with respect to the Russian oil. Now a way out has been found out and the way out with respect to the Indian imports of Russian oil is that uh, India would be making the payments to Russia uh, uh, not in, uh, in not in dollars but in the Chinese uh, uh, currency yuan. The US dollar has long been the main global oil currency but now the yuan is playing an increasingly important role in Russia's financial system because Moscow has been uh, frozen out of the dollar and euro financial networks by international sanctions. Now Indian Oil Corporation in June became the first state refiner to pay for some Russian purchases in Yuan and this has been com confirmed by uh, some sources which are familiar with this, this issue. So the important point is that Indian Oil Corporation, IOC Corporation uh, is the first state refiner uh, to make the payments in in the Chinese currency. Coming to the next piece of information and that is an article that is that has appeared in the newspaper and uh, it, it's, it, it, it gives information about the NATO plus architecture, the NATO plus organization. Now NATO as you all know North Atlantic Treaty Organization. This came into picture post World War II, this organization and uh, its unwritten goal or unwritten aim is to counter the, the Russian, you can say, uh, side, the, the Soviet aggression. Uh, now there is a, there is a, there is a uh, discussion with respect to expansion of, of uh, NATO, territorial expansion of, of NATO and uh, uh, an idea has been floated that India should also uh, uh, join this this NATO, this organization, uh, and that is why this name NATO Plus comes into picture. But the article says that India should refuse this uh, NATO Plus inclusion plan. Now, uh, this this please understand this article. If you see each and every line of this article has been highlighted uh, by me, but then again. Uh, this has been done so because each and every line of this article is important. Now, to for the sake of of uh, brevity and shortness of the video itself, I'll 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 discuss and I'll go through the those portions of this article which have been highlighted by these parallel lines. Otherwise, uh, I'll be uh, in each uh, the entire article, the entire PDF of, of this analysis is available. Article-wise analysis is available on the in the description box. You can download it from there as well. So let's see what is this NATO Plus plan, and at least go through this first parallel. Now, it was during a virtual press briefing in March 2023 on the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Focusing, uh, focusing on South Asia and Indo-Pacific region that United States permanent representative to NATO was quoted as saying that NATO alliance is open to more engagements should India seek that. Reflecting the same sentiment, the US House Select Committee on Strategic Competition between the United States and the Chinese Communist Party in May 2023 recommended strengthening the NATO plus framework by including India in the grouping. India's external affairs minister S. Jashankar has rejected this idea by saying that NATO template does not apply to India. Yet on the eve of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to US in June, 
Senate India Caucus co-chair Mark Warner shared his plans to table a bill to bring India into the NATO plus fold. Now what is the difference between NATO and NATO plus? NATO is a trans-Atlantic military alliance of 31 countries with the majority of the members from Europe. Now after the dissolution of Soviet Union and the end of Cold War, many thought that NATO would lose its relevance. But on the contrary, NATO has not only survived but has also expanded with Finland joining as its 31st member in April 2023 and Sweden waiting to be uh, coming into its ambit. NATO appears to be gaining much needed ground for survival thanks to Russia's tirade against and its invasion of Europe, Europe, uh, I'm sorry, uh, invasion of Ukraine. With NATO swelling its expanse, some analysis even see onset of Cold War 2.0. Now, what is NATO Plus? NATO Plus refers to a security arrangement of NATO and five treaty allies of US. And who are these treaty allies? Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Israel, and South Korea as members to enhance global defense cooperation and, and win the strategic competition with the Chinese Communist Party. So this is NATO Plus. Please understand that NATO plus is not an officially recognized or established concept within the NATO itself. Meaning the term, the, the nomenclature NATO plus, you will not find it uh, in the official literature, official official stationery of, of, of the organization. Uh, but it has been used in discussions and debates, uh, in debates regarding the potential expansion of its allies. So it is an informal term that has come into picture. Uh, please understand that that uh, that why why uh, uh, why America is talking about the inclusion of NATO within it within its uh, within its fold. The reason being that America is 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 a bit worried about China and its expansionist policies, and uh, America wants to tap in on the on the. Uh, on the uh, bilateral issues which India is having with with China. America wants to tap in on those on those issues. Uh, India and China are having a, a, a border dispute, and here uh, America sees an opportunity that if America provides support to India, then obviously as a as a as a, as a in return, India would be would be supporting America on its stand against China. So this is this is this is providing the basic uh, uh, you can say uh, argument uh, basic uh, basic strength to the argument that why India should be included within this NATO plus uh, format. Uh, but the author of the article says that that this this bait uh, needs to be assessed. This bait of bringing India in within uh, within the fold of NATO plus it should be it should be. It should be assessed in the larger context of India's strategic economy, uh, strategic autonomy. I'm sorry. Uh, the author is of the view that that whether uh, joining NATO will it give India the the much required and necessary latitude to pursue its own independent uh, strategic policies. So this is the first. This is the point that is being raised in this article. And uh, in this section, uh, uh, from this paragraph onwards, this paragraph onwards, uh, uh, at which the pointer is there, uh, an analysis has been given in this regard. Now, the author says that first, getting into any NATO framework will annoy Russia and China. Apart from the robust strategic partnership, Russia has been useful to India in dealing with regional security challenges and importantly, moderating the stance of China. Even though Russia is getting over dependent on China post the war in Ukraine, Moscow, Moscow remains a valuable partner for India. Now, if India joins, should it join in one stroke, India's solidified strategic partnership with Russia will crumble, meaning thereby this would not be beneficial for India because Russia has been a long standing partner of India after its independence. So uh, uh, a hasty decision uh, in this regard of India joining the NATO plus framework, it would not be it would not be a good move according to this article. Now the second point that is raised by the author is that while aligning with the US led alliance system may be tempting due to the threats posed by China, it could ultimately prove counterproductive and detrimental. Having a military framework with limits India's freedom of action and prevent it from pursuing an independent policy towards China. 
now this this was this was the point that i was saying that india wants to have a strate uh, 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 independent strategic policy uh, towards e each and every one and if india joins that nato framework uh, the article says that 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 uh, that that much required latitude <coughs> would be missing i'm sorry moreover at a time when india is, has its own bilateral issues with china a strategy for in uh, for for the indo pacific and a strategy for the indo pacific hopping on into the taiwan strategy of us under nato plus would complicate india's security with the possibility of chinese justification for further military build up along india china border and frequent intrusion the third point that is read, that, that is raised by the author is that india has traditionally maintained a policy of strategic autonomy allowing it to engage with various nations and blocs based on its own interest joining a nato framework would require india to align its defense and security policies with the objectives and strategies of the alliance thereby potentially undermining india's autonomy while the non alignment aligned policy will get a quick death it could strain relations relations with countries especially the neighbors and regional organizations that values india's independent stance and could also limit its flexibility in engaging with other regional players meaning thereby joining nato plus framework will lead to a loss of strategic autonomy and the and the the, the grand standing the the posturing of india that india pursues an independent foreign policy and does not come under the influence of uh, any country and considers its uh, self interest to be supreme that image would be would be damaged if india joins that nato framework now what are the priorities of india Uh, india's priorities lies in addressing its own regional dynamics that include a unique set of security challenges such as border disputes terrorism and regional conflicts while nato has certain comp uh, certain comp competencies to deal with such issues its larger geopolitical agenda starting from eurasia to indo pacific may divert resources and attention away from these pressing issues and therefore would not be of much help to india now because now what this this point is saying this point is saying that because india is having its own issues with its neighboring countries uh, uh, and if in such a situation india joins with uh, with a multi country framework such as nato then as an obligation towards the organization india has to you know contribute towards uh, the organizational needs and demands and that will require the diversion of resources diversion of uh, of of many things towards the fulfillment of that organizational goals and that organization being nato and the the the, the goals of uh, organization therefore will become more important uh, when compared to that of the uh, the country the country that is india itself now for, for for the time being what has what has what is the situation for the time being india's posturing through the quad 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 India Japan Australia and the US which is dubbed as Asian NATO as per China now this is important China considers quad as Asian NATO meaning thereby the chinese understanding is very much clear that that western countries led by america are intruding into the asian affairs through quad looks more promising looks more promising in the sense that that uh, not coming uh, formally within the nato framework but then again building a building a, a, a new architecture to counter the the problems to counter the threats that would be emerging from china so this is a good article uh, a throw and through read of this article is very much recommended that is why every line has been highlighted uh but then again the important points uh, have been highlighted as well important paragraphs have been highlighted as well moving on to the next article and that is the clearing the water and what is this related to this is related to providing potable water clean drinking water to every household that scheme that has come into picture and the analysis in this regard Now access to potable tap water is the basic necessity however roughly 25 crore households in India as of 2016 a tap water connection that delivers 55 liter per capita every day of potable water is a rarity on most rural India, in in most of rural India which accounts for about 19.5 crore households now in august 2019 the prime minister made uh, a promise that rural households would be assured piped supply of potable water by 
2024 before the end of his government's tenure. Now, substantial efforts have been made, statistics have been provided, and uh, in this regard, the Jal Shakti Ministry, uh, which has labeled this plan of providing piped water connections as Hargar Jal Mission, has constantly uh, uh, advertised, or you can say, constantly displayed that what have what are the statistics and what are the achievements that have been made post the announcement of, made by the by the Prime Minister. Uh, now, the author of this, this article uh, says that, uh, is of the view and says that, that the, the promise or you can say the aim of providing portable water by 2024 uh, would, be, would be missed, the target would be missed and one of the reasons that he cites is the Russia-Ukraine war, uh, which has slowed down considerably the government officials, uh, you can say their actions why because uh, the required uh, raw material is uh, is is being is is scarce is is less in number if i could say uh, why because impeding access to pipes and civil construction necessary for the enterprise now russia ukraine conflict though a military conflict primarily but it is having fallouts it is having ramifications on each and every aspect of economy and uh, one aspect or one area which is getting affected is this Har Ghar Jal mission. Uh, further the author says for the author says or the author questions the, the figures and the statistics and the data that is reported that is provided by the Jal Shakti ministry and uh, he says that the figure reported by the Jal Shakti ministry are the sole basis of uh, are, are solely based on the data that is reported by the states. Now this, because the reporting of the states is uh, is being questioned. In other words, what the author is trying to say that it might be a possibility that the 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 data that is being provided to the Jal Shakti Ministry might not be accurate. So the author suggests that that an independent assessment uh, uh, should be commissioned. That the, as the point says that an independent assessment commissioned by the Jal Shakti Ministry which sampled about 3 lakh households in 13,300 villages and reported 62% of households as connected in October by last year. Now, uh, because of the, uh, of you can say false reporting or you can say under reporting by the, uh, by the state governments, by the, by the states, true figures were not coming into picture. So, an independent assessment was done and this, these were the figures. Now, the author says that this is good, but too small a sample. 3 lakh households according to the author is is uh, the sample size is small and it is not the true representative of uh, the, the 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 population that is to be served and uh, it for the author further says that it also emerges that the large states with 100% compliance like gujarat haryana punjab etc already started at a fairly high baseline in 2019 so the author recommends that the center must place in uh, must put must put in place a mechanism that discloses the scheme's performance on the ground and in a transparent manner coming to the next uh, uh, article that is a, a stock take before the global stock take now this is with respect to the bond climate change conference which happened from 5 5th to 15th june uh, 2023 now the author uh, highlights certain important points in this regard and this has been highlighted in, in the article as well by these parallel lines uh, as I have said earlier, I have mentioned earlier. So let us go through this article. Now the Bonn Climate Change Conference was, uh, uh, was the last big milestone in the climate negotiations before the, before the first global stock tick under the Paris Agreement at COP conference of parties 28 in Dubai in December. So this COP 28 will be happening in Dubai in December this year. The global stock take is mandated under article 14 clause 1 of the Paris agreement to assess collective progress towards long term global goals. This includes the progress on greenhouse gas reduction, building resilience to climate impact and securing finance to address climate uh, crisis. 
the outcome of global stock take will inform countries on how to update and enhance their actions so this global stock take is basically an assessment that that what all has happened what all has been achieved on this aspect uh, that is the environmental pro protection and the climate uh, uh, climate change in 2014 and the paris agreement countries had agreed to pursue efforts to limit global temperature rise to 1.5 degree centigrade now that the bond conference was held in the context of overweening emphasis on restrictive global average temperature uh, restricting global average temperature below 1.5 degree centigrade as compared to the pre industrial level was reflected in the negotiations now this point is important two ag two agenda items mitigation pathway compatible with the temperature goal and climate finance flows from developed countries to developing countries to enable them to mitigate greenhouse gas emission in line with article 4 uh, 4.5 of the paris agreement remained a point of contention between the developing countries and the environmental integrity group representing the european union and others the idea was to 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 provide to provide finances to the developing countries now the big question remained that who would be providing these finances uh, the developing countries obviously would be looking towards the developed developed countries but developed countries would be would not be willing or you can say would not be liking the idea of giving finances giving money to the developing countries and therefore they were they were placing every other kind of a if i can use the term restriction in this regard now the signal from bond conference was that the developing countries countries too need to be more ambitious in their emission reduction if the world is to limit the global average temperature in the context of adequate finance being provided to the developed by the developed north now here lies the the catch in the entire situation that previously it was agreed that the developed countries would be providing finances providing money to the developing countries but in the bond conference the the buck was passed to the developing countries and it was said that developing countries should also partake some responsibility should take up some responsibility and become more ambitious take be more ambitious with respect to their target achievement uh with respect to the emission reduction uh now this is this is the way in which international politics works and this is reflected in this small point that is highlighted in front of you now furthermore that uh on june 14 climate change negotiation negotiators arrived on a compromise now as the conference moved forward bond conference moved forward on the second last day you can say climate change negotiators arrived on, on a compromise on one of the aspects which relate to the work program on just a transition pathway now the subsidiary body adopted the draft text aimed at working on just a transition pathway and the output will be placed at cop28 conference of party 28 in dubai Now the parties to the paris conference has agreed uh, party to the paris agreement have introduced just transition pathway at cop27 this is an important point now what is this just transition pathway or what is this just transit transition this is highlighted at, at, at this location just transition means that the transformational pathway need to be carried out in a way that it is it is as fair and inclusive as possible to everyone concerned meaning thereby transition from emission based uh, you can uh, say model of of development to to greener uh, model of development the transition the the change from from emission based system to a, 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 a environmentally friendly environmental friendly uh, developmental system now that is that is meant by what is called as just transition and the pathway is the is the is the is the is the methodology or is the path that is to be taken up now the adoption of just transition pathway in the in the draft text of united nation framework convention on climate change changes subsidiary body of implementation is also aligned with the paris agreement stand stand with which is a self differentiation which is self differentiation grounded in the idea of nationally determined contributions now this bottom approach bottom up approach was inserted in the paris agreement with the idea of allowing developing countries 
which face special needs and circumstances to align their low carbon development pathway that integrate socio-economic components in line with state determined development priorities so this is this is the way in which that just transition pathway idea has come up and has been implemented moving further coming on to the idea of finances now the important point that has been highlighted is over here adoption finances had lagged behind mitigation finances adoption in the sense adoption of greener technologies and green uh, uh, green machinery greener technologies and all that has lagged behind the mitigation finances probably due to the absence of universally agreed upon metrics now this is the reason that has been cited at the at the conference the environmental integrity group insisted on mitigation work program to be yielding the finances a move to somewhat digress from the transfer of major portion of international public finances from developed countries to developing countries likewise in the effort towards aligning climate finance with the paris agreement temperature goals it is important now this is a recommendation that is coming into picture that it is important to integrate world bank in climate change negotiations and hold it accountable as it is making huge investments in fossil fuels therefore the author thinks that the pursuance of global stock take as part of paris agreement need to comply with the principles of equity justice and fairness so this was related to this article a stock take before the global stock take and moving on to the next one now this is related to uh, the the controversy or you can say issue that has emerged in one of the temples the nataraj temple in chidambaram district in chidambaram of uh, kodalor district of of uh, tamil nadu now what is this uh, uh, this issue uh, obviously the the topic should not be considered as with respect to what are the practices what are the religious practices and the allied things associated with it uh, it is it, the, it just it should be noted the article just highlights or i can say the the highlighted portion within the article just shows that there is there is a nataraj temple in 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 the in the locality called as chitambaram which is located in this kodalor district of tamil nadu and uh, the administrator come priest uh, are referred to as podu uh, diksha Dik, dikshitras and uh, there is a conflict between the, uh, the administrators come priest and the state government apart from this the chidambaram area the area in which it is the temple is located is a prime center of saiva philosophy and the temple has been patronized by uh, different kings of and rulers of of southern india like simhavarman of pallava dynasty aditya one of chola dynasty krishna devarai of vijayanagar empire and nayaka kings now this article is about The, uh, about or you can say the important information from this article is this much only apart from that some other issues i have highlighted you can go through them uh, why i this article or this information becomes important because if you look at the civil service examination pre examination paper of this year uh, which happened very uh, in the last month in the last last month i'm sorry in the month of may in the month of may Uh, it has uh, it has uh, the the questions many questions were from the history of south india so this article becomes important for for that purpose coming to coming to uh, the next uh, piece of information that is greedflation and its counter arguments moving on to the next news this is greedflation and its counter arguments how consumers ultimately decide prices now inflation as you know stagflation as you know these all are uh, different terms in the domain of economics now a new term has has come into picture that is greedflation greed in in the sense the greediness of a person so greedflation the inflation driven or inflation pushed or inflation uh, uh, that comes into picture because of the greed of enterprises the service service providers the corporates etc etc so what 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 is this article trying to tell what is this try, article trying to inform to the readers is that essentially it is not the greedflation uh, uh, that drives up the prices 
but it is the consumers who ultimately decide upon the price of goods and commodities and services. So greedflation refers to price inflation caused by corporate greed for higher profits. Progressives in United States, progressives here and liberals in United States have accused the corporates uh, and the corporate greed as a major reason for historically high price inflation in the US since pandemic, pandemic that is COVID-19 pandemic. <clears throat> The proponents of the idea of greedflation argue that corporate profit margins have risen significantly since the pandemic, even though a larger economy has struggled and that this has contributed to high inflation. So this is the this is the argument that has been propounded by or, pro, or proposed by the, the liberal section, the left liberals of the United States that the corporate greed uh, has uh, uh, led to a situation where they want higher profits and uh, because of their greed for higher profit the inflation and the inflationary figures are high uh, uh, after in the in the in the time after the the pandemic pandemic covid-19 pandemic now as I, as i said earlier that this article counters this this narrative counters this argument or that corporate greed is the reason for inflation uh, now the analysis in this regard is in this in these subsequent points <clears throat> many economists however have questioned the validity of the argument that corporate thirst for higher profit is the cause behind inflation they see uh, greedflation as a political narrative uh, uh, as, a, as a as a political narrative built around the issue of inflation rather than serious economic thought Meaning thereby they are of the view, the thinkers of the view that greedflation, the idea of greedflation is nothing but a hokum. It is just a political narrative to score political points. Uh, and it is this entire argument is not based on the sound principles of, of economic analysis. Economists who disagree with greedflation narrative argue that businesses, whether they are large corporations or small companies, cannot arbitrarily set prices as many people seem to erroneously believe. Businesses set prices of their products based on what the consumers are willing to pay for their products. In other words, it is the consumer who decides upon the price of a good or a service. And that is why there, there is the primacy of consumers. <clears throat> inflation inf refers to, now what is inflation? Inflation refers to general rise in price, price levels of goods and services. Uh, uh, across the broader economy rather than, than in the prices rather than the rise in prices of individual goods and services. So it's not inflation is not uh, calculated in terms of the increase of the price of one or two products. It is the general increase in the price levels. For example, as of now, uh, there is this news that tomato prices, tomato, tomato prices are rising in India. But does it show the uh, inflationary levels at a general level? According to this analysis, no, because tomato is just one commodity, one entity. But if there is a general price rise, then it would be referred to as, as inflation. There is however no evidence to suggest that there has been a deliberate reduction in the output of the US corporations recently. Now the propounders of this green inflation idea say that during the time of pandemic and post pandemic uh, the, the corporations, the corporates have reduced their output thereby pushing up the prices of uh, <clears throat> of uh, the goods and services and it is it is the only way through which they can bridge up the gap in their profits that uh, uh, in their in their, in their profits uh, that have gone down because of the reduction in the output uh, during the time of pandemic in other words if uh, uh, during the time of pandemic when every other economic activity was stalled uh, the corporations were going into a loss so how can they make up for their losses post pandemic they have to reduce their output so that the prices of individual commodities go up and as the prices go up their profits go up and in this process by this process only they can make up for the losses that have happened during the time of, of, of pandemic when the economic activity was stalled or was in or was, was running at a slow speed. So, uh, so but the, 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 uh, the article says that there is no evidence to suggest that there is a deliberate reduction of output of the US corporations and even if the corporations cut down the output, the drop in output is likely to be temporary as the other suppliers would rush to meet the demand. 
The current bout of high inflation in the US, most economists believe, is much better explained by the US Federal Reserve's expansionary, expansionary monetary policy during the pandemic, <clears throat> which put more money in the hands of US consumers, who in turn have bid up the prices of goods and services in the economy. A classic Keynesian move, Keynesian economics uh, uh, comes into play over here that whenever there is less demand in the economy, the idea is to put more money into the hands of the consumers, to the people so that they have more money to spend and when they have more money to spend, they would be buying more uh, uh, commodities from the market, therefore bringing up higher demands. But uh, one important factor uh, that has not been taken into account is the idea of pandemic itself. And so this uh, uh, this leads to what is called as a, <clears throat> a situation where on the one hand demand is increasing, uh, demand of commodities is increasing, but the supply of those commodities are, uh, is not uh, being fulfilled or uh, not being not adequate uh, quantities of the commodity is not being provided owing to the presence of a pandemic which has, which has caused a slowdown in the economic activity. Now, uh, the, to the question that where did the profits then come from? If if uh, economic activity is not there, then then how are, how is the the corporates making their the the profit their profits? Now, economists have also pointed out that the cost of input used by businesses has risen as a, at a faster pace than the pace at which the prices of consumer goods have risen. In such a climate, the rise in the price profit margins of corporations has has come down as a surprise. It should be noted, however, that the corporations represent just a tiny share of total number of businesses in the US economy. So their rising profits, profit margin may not present a true picture of the health of business in the wider economy. In fact, it could well be the case that the large corporations benefited from the demise of smaller businesses during the pandemic by capturing more of their market share. Now, what is this 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 point? This point says <clears throat> this point tries tries to answer the question that if the the corporations, the American corporations, are not displaying the tendency of greedflation, they are not restricting their output. Uh, then, what is the reason for their uh, for their soaring profits? So, the economists are of the view that uh, that in an economy, in uh, in U.S. economy, the big corporations they are just a small fraction of the uh, of what is called as the service providers. Many small businesses also operate within what is called as the U.S. economy. During the pandemic, these small businesses they have to wind up their activities. Why? Because the cost of doing business increased for them. And when the cost of business increased for them, they had to shut their shops down. And uh, when the sh when they when they when they shut down their shops, what happened that the big corporations captured their their vacated space, and uh, what happened that that the corporations were able to to you know make some profit out of the situation. Now, while this suggests that the market dominance of U.S. corporations may have risen considerably, particularly since the rising profit margins could possibly be a sign of weakening competition among the businesses, it st still does not mean that the rising profit margins are the reason behind inflation. Now, this point, as I highlighted by these parallel lines, is important. Greedflation has been compared to other theories of cost push inflation which attribute inflation to a rise in input cost. For example, in the past, a rise in the wages demanded by workers has been blamed for the rise in the price of goods and services. In case, in case of greedflation, it is the rise in the corporate thirst for profits that is seen as the cost, as a cost that is driving up prices. Now, a criticism to the cost push theory of inflation has been that it ignores the fact that the cost of producing any good is itself determined indirectly by the consumers. It should be noted that the cost of inputs which can be used towards different alternative ends of society is determined by competitive bidding in the market. So this is the, this is the information regarding greedflation. Coming to the next uh, news that is Center announces scheme to support minor rape victims. Now, this is another scheme that has been launched under the aegis of what is called as the Nirbhaya Fund, where child care institutions uh, would be coming into picture. 
uh, under this uh, what is called as a mission vatsalya which is which was launched in, launched in 2021 to focus uh, which is focused on the protection of welfare of children now this is uh, with, uh, this this, uh, this scheme you know uh, caters to the the psychological physical and the emotional needs of uh, rape victims who are minors less than 18 years of age and uh, takes up their cause i would say so this piece of information is important this is a building story uh, much more would be coming from the side of the government in this regard uh, a small piece of information a small tidbit you can say uh, something called as a micro sleep now this uh, term comes uh, in the newspaper as a, uh, there was this uh, good strain accident uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, two loco pilots removed from service following adra good good strain accident now the strain accident of late uh, have been uh, uh, happening you can say uh, there was this uh, big accident where many people died in 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 the in odisha and after that this uh, this uh, uh, good strain was uh, derailed it was it met with an accident so this concept micro sleep comes into picture now as i have mentioned it over here micro sleep means it is an episode of sleep that lasts for a few seconds to a several seconds now uh, it is that stage of sleep you can say where the person going through micro sleep micro sleep uh, the reflexes of that individual would be diminished in a, <clears throat> again a, a tidbit not uh, the entire article is not that important only that that term is important lastly coming to the last article and that is china to stay out of sri lanka's creditors platform and here in this uh, article uh, you will be finding the reference to a to a to an organization called as a paris club now paris club it is it is having 22 permanent members now what is paris club it is an informal group uh, of uh, 22 members and the first meeting of this club happened in 1956 when argentina agreed to meet its public creditors in paris now as an activity please find out who all are the 22 members of this paris club now what is the 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 utility of this paris club what is the 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 reason for this paris club i'm sorry to come into news it is this china has said that it will not be joining the creditors platform the official creditors platform which is negotiating a common debt treatment plan for sri lanka Uh, china has been one of the uh, one of the country which has provided a huge uh, financial aid financial investment done financial investment in 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 sri lanka and uh, sri lanka as you know has gone through a debt crisis so uh, uh, the countries who had lended money to sri lanka they they they, they have uh, you know uh, they have they have been negotiating under the under the aegis of paris club but uh, china says that it would be staying out of it so this was uh, this was all these these were all the uh, news worthy uh, uh, pieces of information important pieces of information for examination purpose i'll see you in the next session thank you very much